Okay, so in this, uh, in this video, I want to speak a little bit about um, what a measurement is. So you remember that um, we said that a measurement is, is a somewhat mysterious, uh, um, it, it's somewhat mysterious. So the state of a qubit, for example, is this, um, is this unit vector in a complex vector space. So you have two complex amplitudes for zero and one. And then when you measure, measure mysteriously, one of these two possibilities appears and the, and the state of the qubit actually changes as a result of the measurement. So what's going on behind the scenes? Okay, so, um, well, the answer is really nobody knows. So the, the way I described the measurement is called the Copenhagen interpretation. There are other interpretations that, that try to make sense of it. Um, I've never found them very useful. Um, let me just tell you how, you know, how I think about what a measurement is. You might find it useful. So let's see. Here's, um, here's the idea. So you have a qubit. It's in the state alpha zero plus beta one. Okay, so this is the state of our qubit. And now we go to measure it. Okay, so, so this is our qubit coming along. And now we have some, some measuring apparatus. And the output is zero with probability magnitude alpha squared, one with probability magnitude beta squared. So you could ask, well, what happened here? So how is it that this, that this needle in your measuring apparatus pointed at zero with some probability and one with some probability? So, so the answer is, the, the way we'll think about it is that what we are doing is we are entangling the qubit with, with the needle. So, so we, we are actually going into the, into the state. So let me, let me say that there are two states of the needle. If, if the needle is pointing at, at zero, I'll call that state N zero. And if the needle, so this is needle pointing at zero, N sub one is needle pointing at one. So this is a huge macroscopic object. So. Okay, so what, what do we want to think of uh, this as? We, we want to think of uh, the process of measurement as entangling the quantum state of this qubit with that of the needle. So you enter into this superposition, alpha zero, n sub zero, plus beta one, n sub one. Remember, we have this tensor product notation. What we mean by this is alpha zero tensor, n sub zero, plus beta, one tensor n sub one. Okay, but now we say, look, macroscopic objects are unable to maintain this superposition. So something mysterious happens and everything collapses and um, you, cannot have, you cannot have a needle which is a macroscopic object in, in a superposition of zero, you know, of, uh, of being in state zero and one. And so one of these two, choice, two choices is actually instantiated and with what probability, alpha squared, beta squared. So we, haven't, we, aren't, we aren't trying to explain the mystery, we are just sort of saying, well, what might have happened behind, you know, what, how should we think about it? So, so now we can say, well, how, did it, how could it be that this, this, this qubit got entangled with the, with the needle? Well, here's how. So, so let's imagine this is our qubit. This is, this is psi, alpha zero plus beta one. And let's say we have one more qubit in the state zero and we want to entangle them. What would we do? Well, here's one way we can do it. We can do a C naught gate. So this was alpha zero plus beta one. And now what's the output? It's alpha zero zero plus beta one one. Okay. But now suppose, suppose you, you don't like the fact that it's only an entanglement of two, two qubits. Let's say you have two more qubits sitting around, also in the state zero. Now what you could do is, you could run a C naught gate from the first qubit to this third one, from the second qubit to the fourth one. And now what's the state of, the, of these four qubits? Well, okay, so what was the state before of these four qubits? Well. The, the state before these C naught gates was, so at this point, the state was alpha zero, 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 plus beta one, one, zero, zero. Right, the third and the fourth qubits are always in the state zero. 
right, before we did the C naughts. Now what happens after we do a C naught from the first to the third? Well, here nothing happens. Here the bit gets flipped. So it goes to alpha 0, 0, 0, 0 right, no, no change, plus beta 1, 1, 1, 0, right, because this bit got flipped. So this is C naught from 1 to 3. What about the C naught from 2 to 4? Well, here nothing happens. Here that bit flips, so you get alpha, beta, 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so this is called a cat state, right, after Schrodinger's cat. Okay, but now what if you're not, not happy with four qubits? Well, you could, you could add another four to the mix, and you could do a C naught from each of these qubits to the corresponding qubit down there. So you could have four C naught gates stretching from top to bottom. And what, what would you expect to see? Well, you'd expect that after you do these C naughts, you'd get alpha eight zeros, beta, all the qubits are in state one. Now, what if you go through this doubling a few times? Let's say you go through it, um, how many times would you have to go through it? Uh, maybe, uh, you know, 30, 40 times, and you'd, how, many, how many qubits would you have here? You have two to the 30, two to the 40, this is getting to be a macroscopic number. And so now what you'd, what you'd have done by doing these C naughts successively, just 30 or 40 times, is you have a macroscopic superposition. Okay. And somehow nature does not like macroscopic superpositions. Okay. This is where the mystery comes in. Where does the collapse happen? We don't know, I don't know at least. But somewhere along the way, the superposition collapses and you get this measurement. Okay. So this is what happens in a photomultiplier where you're, where you're detecting the polarization of a photon or in a Geiger counter. You know, you, well, uh, abstractly, you know, at, at some level of abstraction, you, you, it's, it's okay to think of it as repeated C naught gates in this way that amplify the qubit to a macroscopic scale, right? It's not copying the qubit, that's not what a C naught gate does. It just takes this superposition, right? There's, there, there are only two amplitudes here, alpha and beta, right? But then it entangles that qubit with more and more qubits, right? Until, until the, the entanglement reaches such a large scale that for some reason, nature can't sustain it anymore and it, and it, and it uh, causes a measurement to happen. Okay, so that's as much as I, I can say about what a, what a measurement is. Um, maybe uh, some of you will find this, find this a useful way to think about, uh, about uh, measurements.